and welcome to the Game Master How-To Series from the Army Painter. Today we're going to make a lava lake. In this short tutorial, we're going to demonstrate just how simple it is to craft your own terrain with the materials and tools included in the Game Master Dungeons & Caverns core set. First, we must prepare our XPS foam. Sanding it will give it added texture and help the paint to adhere better. Next, you'll begin marking off your tiles one inch by one inch. Using the scenery knife, you'll begin scoring the tile lines. It's important that you just lightly score the foam and not cut all the way through. You'll find out why in later steps. Now we'll mark the perpendicular cross sections, again one inch by one inch, and we'll repeat the scoring process to create the foundation for your tiles. It's important to remember that we are only scoring the foam, not cutting all the way through. Now using a handy graphite pencil, we'll reinforce the tile lines. The scoring acts as a guide for super simple, effective, and well-defined lines. Next, using an old rock or brick as we have here, you'll stamp the brick into the foam to create added texture. If you'd like to further weather your tiles, using a graphite pencil, you can draw cracks in the stone to give it a simple aged effect. Using cocktail sticks and a fresh piece of foam, you'll secure the tile to the foam. The toothpicks act as reinforcement and help to keep the two pieces stable. That way you can cut two mirrored shapes using our hot wire foam cutter. Slowly and carefully trace the jagged edges to your liking. Repeat this process around each edge of the lava lake, leaving a two tile entryway so you can fit modular tiles with it. Remove the cocktail sticks and you should have two perfectly mirrored pieces of foam. Using the hot wire cutter again, you'll cut the inner shape of the lake. Leave enough room for the base of your models to fit around it. Carefully remove the hot wire cutter and remove the inner piece of foam. Sand the bottoms to each piece of foam to ensure that the glue adheres to it. Apply your XPS foam sculpting glue. And carefully adhere the two pieces together. With your tiles cut, you can now begin to add even more realistic texture. Start by applying our XPS foam glue in random spots on the tile and using a wash brush, spread out the glue to the shape that you desire. Then sprinkle the Game Master scenery sand on top of the glue. Don't worry if you make a mess, you can always reuse any leftover sand for later projects. Once the glue is dried, you can shake off the excess. To give the lake a fluid look, you'll want to apply a generous layer of XPS foam sculpting glue inside the lake bed. Use a wash brush to smooth out the glue for even coverage. As the glue sets, you can use the brush to create subtle ripples and waves. In a well-ventilated area, give your dungeon and subterrain spray primer a good shake and begin applying a smooth, even coat to your tile. When you're finished priming, clean the nozzle by spraying upside down until pigment stops emitting from the nozzle. Using cavern base paint and a large dry brush, you'll apply your first base coat to the cavern tiles. Be sure to get good solid coverage, but it's okay if some of the primer is left in the recesses. Next, you'll apply a dry brush of cavern highlights using your large dry brush. Lightly flick the bristles across the raised details to pick out the highlights. You'll follow the same technique with cavern effects, this time being more conservative with your application. With a watered down application of Brink Black, you'll apply a shade over top of the rocky texture on the base. Because it's thinned down, you can feather out the pigment to create a nice natural gradation. With Dungeon Base and a medium dry brush, we'll begin base coating all of the rocky features on the tile. Then we'll apply a dry brush highlight of dungeon highlights to the rocks just to pick out the details. Next we will apply a final highlight using dungeon effects, being very conservative with this application. 
Add some subterrain wash to your palette and using the wash brush, begin feathering in this color randomly around the stones and other parts of the tiles to create an aged and mossy effect. With a wash brush and dungeon highlights, we're going to base coat the bottom of the lake. Using this light gray tone will be a perfect starting point for the brighter pigments to come. Thin down your paint and just try to get nice smooth coverage at the bottom of the lake. You can always apply a second coat to ensure that you get nice even coverage. Now using Dungeon Effects, we'll apply a stippling technique where we just apply a bit of this brighter tone to add dimension and depth before applying our brighter pigments in the later stages. Now we're going to pull some paints from the Army Painter War Paints range. Starting with Demonic Yellow, we're going to apply a very smooth base coat to the lake. Next we'll apply Mythical Orange, this time around the edges of the lake, and subtly feather it into the Demonic Yellow for a simple blend. We're just trying to tint the outer edges here. Using Mars Red, we'll apply this even more focus between our orange and the edge of the lake. We're really watering down the paints to apply a thin, gradual layer which really helps to give off that glowing hot lava effect. Using Brink Black again, this time we're going to apply tiny speckles of magma on top of our flowing lava lake. A good tip is to apply these close to the edges of the lake in random shapes and patterns. Using Dungeon Effects, we'll paint in sporadic dots once again, this time to give the illusion of liquid hot bubbles erupting at the lake's surface. To make that glowing lava effect even more pronounced, we'll use our wash brush and apply a subtle edge highlight to the lip of the edge of the lake. This gives the illusion that the light is reflecting from the lake onto the dungeon tiles. Now with a bit of XPS foam glue, our dungeon tufts and a tweezer from the Army Painter tool range, we'll begin applying some foliage to the tiles in random areas. And our lava lake is now complete. If you followed along, then you've just learned how simple, easy, and fun it can be to create your own cavern terrain with the tools and materials found inside the Game Master Dungeons and Caverns core set, made for adventurers by the Army Painter.